happy December. I mean, a joy-filled December. Look, as we step into this new season of Advent, I want to help you celebrate all that God has already done for you, but I also want to help you celebrate what He's about to do in your life, in your home, in your family. It's just not long ago, I unwrapped a piece of dark chocolate, and on the inside, the wrapper said, when life isn't going right, then go left. I mean, it's, it's kind of cute, right? But maybe something a person would say to a friend when they've just, they've just got nothing. I got nothing. But let's face it, it's pretty empty advice. Aren't you thankful that when life isn't going right, God's got the answer. He has the counsel, the advice for us. So let's pray and get God's direction right now as we launch into this new series. Heavenly Father, we believe we receive your word your only begotten Son, Jesus, we receive your precious Holy Spirit for help. Help to unfold the treasure map to our destiny and all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Say, I receive it. I receive it. This Christmas, part one. This Christmas, part one. And we're going to zone especially in on this session in Plant This Christmas plant this Christmas. You know, we can use God's promises and principles to get ready for the best Christmas ever. This is a four-part series. This Christmas, that's the title of the series, we're going to learn God's wisdom on how to plant this Christmas, prune this Christmas, prevail this Christmas, and prize this Christmas. Plant, it's all about being intentional. Pruning, it's all about eliminating. Prevailing, it's all about action and movement. And prize, this Christmas is going to be about celebrating the gift, being thankful, praising, and pressing on. So here we go into part one, plant this Christmas. Wow. Do you mind if I state the obvious? I say this with a heart that desperately wants you blessed. I want you happy, prospering in God's goodness and His will for your life. Please let me state the obvious, and I'll do it gently because I understand that even in stating what's obvious, it's still going to be a shock to some of you. So here we go. If you don't have an orange tree in your life, but you want an orange tree in your life, it's for one or two obvious reasons. One, you have not planted an orange tree. And two, you have planted an orange tree, but it's in the wrong ground. Here's how the Bible says this. Proverbs 19, verse 2. Desire without knowledge is not good. Now, regardless of what the orange tree represents in your life, regardless of the dream, the desire, or the longing, if you don't sow, the dream will not grow. You might ask, well, what in the world does sowing and planting have to do with this Christmas? Everything, my friend. Just about everything. Christmas began with the greatest God miracle on earth over 2,000 years ago. Christians have come to know it as the season of Advent. It's the celebration of the coming of Christ, the Son of God, Jesus the Savior, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Think of this. God so loved this world of humanity that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Another way of saying God gave is to say God planted, He sowed. Christmas is a celebration of planting the most precious seed in the ground of humanity, Jesus, that God might reap His desire, a harvest of sons and daughters, a huge family from His only begotten Son. Christmas is the celebration of God's ability, His mercy, and His willingness to plant. God planted Jesus to get you as his child and have a family, a wonderful family with you in it. So yeah, I'm pointing out the obvious to you because your desires depend on this knowledge. Your future depends on it. This Christmas depends on it. If God Almighty had to plant one perfect seed into the desperate ground of a lost humanity, you and I should be encouraged that there's never been a better time to sow for a dream, plant our faith for a miracle, and yes, plant this Christmas. 
Oh, I sense it in my heart. Something born of heaven is wanting to move into your life this Advent season, but make no mistake, you must plant. If God couldn't save the world without planting his son, don't you think he would have taken the option? A God who is not willing that any should perish would have gladly opted out of his perfect son needing to die and being laid in a tomb. But no, the law of sowing and reaping is principle. It's fundamental to life, even eternal life. It's absolute. It's how God does everything that he does. He sows plants, and then harvest an outcome. God will always plan his word for his desired outcome. Think about God's role as the first father of all time. I mean, after all, he is even the father of Christmas. The danger with having children is that you get to love them, teach them, train them, but you cannot control what they plant. So you have to love them through some difficult harvest times, seasons. That's what Father God has done for thousands of years. His mercy has endured as he suffered so many of his lost children reaping bad harvests. Oh, my friend, that's why I'm daring to state the obvious. If there ever was a Christmas to plant, this is it. This Christmas is ripe for a life-changing miracle in your home, in your life, in your family. Yes, in your mind, in your thinking. Plant for a miracle. Believe on the Lord, and the Bible says you shall be saved. That's the light your heart has longed for. It's the reason so many people get jaded about Christmas. Society is longing for authentic light, but then refuse to plant the seed of life. That's truth. They're looking for a distraction, a ready-made party, that, that full feeling to counter the emptiness. Just more decorations and a little bit more of a lightning in a bottle, right? John Maxwell, the famous life coach and motivational author, said this, pay now, play later. Play now, pay later. Let's say it this way. Plant this Christmas, peace after Christmas. Plant this Christmas, prosper after Christmas. Plant this Christmas, parade after Christmas. Oh, but culture teaches us we need the parade now. We can't wait. Parade now, pleasure now, presence now. And then it's just a whole bunch of pay later, pay later, and then more pay later. This is not just a money thing either. We've lost the genius of delayed gratification. It's the need to gratify ourselves at the expense of a plant this Christmas wisdom. Robin Williams, you probably remember him as the famous comedian and movie star. He said this, I used to think the worst thing in life was to end up all alone. It's not. The worst thing in life is to end up with people that make you feel all alone. Sadly, Robin struggled with addiction, depression, loneliness, and took his own life only a few years after making that statement. When kids see presents under the tree, that they can't open because it's not Christmas yet. Subconsciously, they experience the power of delayed gratification. Hope builds. Good things come to those who wait. Christmas morning is all the more exciting, amazing, over the top, because the child had to wait for the presents. Unfortunately, the world has deconstructed the ideology of the Christmas delay. We gratify our desires at the expense of planting for our desires. Can I say that again? We gratify our desires at the expense of planting for our desires. This is God's wisdom. Plant this Christmas. God knows you have desires, so plant. Plan to plant starting now. Bob Hope, the legendary comedian who lived to be 100 years old, he said this, when we recall Christmas past, we usually find that the simplest things, not the great occasions, give off the greatest glow of happiness. Oh, now Bob, Bob seemed to know a little something about how and what to plant. We live in such a buy now, pay later culture. Social media inflames that pervasive influence for instant gratification. People have little to no patience or tolerance for the process of allowing a seed to bring forth life. 
Society wants their 10-foot tree now with no regard for planting, watering, growing, or all the other inherent blessings to the process. Google culture, they want their rock star outcome now. And if we can't have what we're sure that we want, the dream is just lost. I can't go on. It's time to rediscover the blessing of hoping and having faith. Yes, learning to sow for your desire this Christmas. When you plant, it's evidence that you have vision for the future. Someone long ago said this, may you never be too grown up to search the skies on Christmas Eve. I really like this. It's, it's like a prayer not to lose hope or forget how to hope. It reminds me of what Jesus said when he talked about faith in Matthew 18. He said, unless you turn and become like little children, trusting, loving, forgiving, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is talking about access to his culture of supernatural life here on earth. That's what Christmas is all about. And yes, it's for kids from 1 to 92. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas to you. We all need to work that Matthew 18 childlike trust in God. Otherwise, we never look up. We forget how to hope. And when people forget how to hope, they forget how to plant the art of delayed gratification. So, so when I say plant this Christmas, you may picture a Christmas tree. Have you ever wondered where did the tradition of Christmas trees come from? Well, it was first initiated many, many years ago. Back in the Middle Ages, education was very limited, so many people couldn't read. Leaders wanted to teach the Bible, and they came up with the idea of using plays. Now, this may surprise you. The play they used to teach the Christmas story involved Adam and Eve. Well, what does the first man and woman have to do with Christmas, you may ask? Great question. Imagine this. It's cold, wintry Germany, and people are tying ornaments of red apples to an evergreen tree. The story they're telling is how Adam and Eve rebelled against God and ate the fruit he told them not to from the tree in the garden. Their relationship with God is broken as a result of sin, so they're exiled from the Garden of Eden. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The play helped the people understand the source of fear and conflict in the world because sin has a terrible price. The play helped illuminate why Jesus came as the babe in the manger, lived a perfect life, then died on a cross to pay the debt of Adam and Eve, and yes, the sin debt for all of us. We needed a Savior who was both God and man. The amazing grace plan is God injecting himself into his own creation. Without that miracle, there is no happy holidays, my friend, none. Why the evergreen tree? Well, it portrays the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. The desirable red ornaments represent temptation and our sinful choices. The light on the tree represents Jesus, our Savior. John 1 says, He is the true light, shining into the darkness, illuminating the heart, your heart. The tradition of a Christmas tree, when you understand it, points our hearts spiritually north to the reason for the season. One of Pam's and my most favorite places is the famous Lenderick Christmas tree farm in Belmont, Michigan. A little side note here, this is where Pam and I first became a couple, and so I understand something about the amazing power of blessing when you plant this Christmas. Let's do something fun and take a quick visit to the tree farm. Ed, I'm so glad to be here on Lendrick Christmas Tree Farm. This is awesome. I guess it's not called Lendrick Christmas Tree, it's Lendrick Tree Farm. But man, thanks for having us. And tell me a little bit, where did this whole vision start with Lendrick Tree Farm? Well, it started back in the 50s um, in East Grand Rapids. We had about 150 trees that my family started selling. And it's just progressed into about 60 to 70,000 trees we have on the property now. And these trees don't just start being like seven and eight foot gorgeous trees, right? What, what size do they start at? Well, the little seedlings, they can start out maybe about 12 to 18 inches. Um, then they'll grow on up to 
20, 30 feet, um, or even bigger, depending on what your needs are. Folks, I want you to look at these trees. They're gorgeous. Look at these beautiful trees. And like, like he's talking about, they got a farm of about 60 to 70, 000, from 150 to 60, 70,000 trees. It's amazing, the vision. Ed, it must take a lot of patience, you know, watching from a seedling. We see how small it is. It doesn't even come up to barely my ankle. And then all of a sudden you got a seven, eight foot, nine foot tree. Yes, and uh, as we're always planning for the future. We start with the little guys. It takes a lot of patience um, and just keep everything growing for next generations. Um, it's, it's just a good family experience for us. Ed, you know, looking around and talking about from a seedling to a full-grown tree, I got to figure there's a lot of investment on your part into these amazing trees. Oh, absolutely. Um, right from the start when the little seedlings, um, you got to make sure they're watered well, make sure you get the right fertilizer. You know, we got um, fungus that we have to attend to, there's pests, you know, it, it's not an easy little task to get into. It takes a lot of energy and patience. Um, and just a, a overall investment of time. So how many years would it take to go from a seedling to let's say a tree ready for harvest at seven, eight feet? Um, given the seedling size, usually we turn ours around in about seven or eight years. You know, they could take longer depending on if you don't water them or if you let weeds get too tall, it'll take all the nourishment away from it. So you, a lot of, a lot of uh, what do you want to say, hard work and uh, elbow grease will, goes a long way in this world. I get the practical of it when you plant, you got to be patient and you got to be willing to let the dream grow. So good. What a wonderful taste of Christmas and a great visual on why and how we plant. Now let's move this towards some practical thinking and apply it. I know it's familiar, but let's look again at the interaction between the angel messenger and the shepherds that first Christmas outside of Bethlehem. Luke 2, starting at verse 8. And in that vicinity, there were shepherds living out under the open sky in the field, watching in shifts over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone all about them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the town of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find, after searching, a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Ah, shift work. And it was the midnight shift. Tough job, hard work. And then God interrupts them. The angel said, this day, and then he said, you will find. Let's face it. You need to discover what God's planted for you this day. When you find what he's planted for you and how he's planted for you, then you can continue with purpose for your life. It's life-changing, powerful. When you plant what God gives you in the ground that he gives you, your tree farm appears. You activate destiny. Your days take shape. The week sequence and the months of your life matter because you're not just chasing gratification, but you're finding God. This is like the most amazing discovery of the true meaning of Christmas. It's good news of a great joy, which has come to all people, but not all people receive the gift, sadly. So they live without the gift. Jim Gaffigan, funny comedian and actor, he said this, ever wonder what people got Jesus for Christmas? It's like, oh great, socks? You know, I'm dying for your sins, right? Yeah, but thanks for the socks. They'll go great with my sandals. What am I, German? <laughs> Thank God Jesus is the reason for the season and not the socks with the sandals. And forgive me, but 20 years from now, this look is not gonna age well. I'm just saying. As we've learned on the Christmas tree farm, you plant what you want to grow. We all want life, and yet the dream of abundant life seems beyond imagination for many. How can we grow life if we really don't have life to plant? You might say, well, I've got my life to plant, but think about it. If your life is broken and marred by sin, all you'd be growing is more pain, more brokenness, and more mess. 
It's what a lot of people have. Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means we have no real life to plant because without God's glory, life is a dead end, empty, futile, a futile existence. Oh, so that's why the angel said, good news, a savior is born. You see, God had to plant first. The evergreen son of God, God's most perfect plant of glory, hung on the dead wood at the cursed cross. And guess what? He inverted the curse into a blessing for humanity. That's called redemption. It's the gift of all gifts. Do you want to plant life? You need his life, Jesus' life. God raised him up, and now the power of resurrection life is in Jesus, the power to plant this Christmas. You plant your broken life in Christ, in him, and Christ Jesus in turn plants his unfailing eternal life into you. Brokenness for wholeness. Deadwood for evergreen boughs of mercy, kindness, and grace. Praise God! Now, you can understand with even a greater affection the angelic heavenly knighthood, that first starry night, and I do believe it was starry one, on Luke 2, verse 14. They said, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. That's the exchange the Savior brings, life and glory for our death and shame. Jesus inaugurated the new tree of life, spiritual evergreen here on earth. Praise God. Jesus became the first planting of the Lord among humanity. Yes, we're all meant to be planted in God's family. Real Christmas is because God planted. Ed showed us the future of his Christmas tree farm. It's in the planting. Christ invites us to plant our life in him. He plants his victory, his gifts, his blessings in us. What an exchange. Stephen, are you saying Christmas is all about giving to get? Well, you better believe it. Except it's giving to get so that you can give again and again and get again and then give again. God gave us his perfect son so that he could have us as his family. The more God gets a return on his giving, the more he keeps giving and giving. Shouldn't we do the same? So here's a simple, simple list on how to plant this Christmas, how you can plant this Christmas. Number one, plan. I know it sounds too easy, unspiritual, and like God wouldn't care, but the truth is a plan is evidence of your faith. Write out the plan. It's the first four letters of plant. So how couldn't this be number one on the list? Plan. Plan to read Luke 2 over several times this week, even once a day, and then let the Holy Spirit guide you with your plan for Christmas. Write it down. Remember, a plan should include a budget, where to give, how to relax, where you need to supplement your environment with true Christmas inspiration. Plan what to plant this Christmas and let God direct you. And then number two, Add the T, of course, add the T, the cross. I told you this would be simple, but it works. T is for transcendent. Add the transcendent to your plan. In other words, add God's supernatural beyond the limits of what is natural or material. It's been said that less than a third of the population makes a plan for life. Can you just imagine how much less use their faith in God to add supernatural life to their plan? Add the T, the cross. Add the cross of Christ to your plans this Christmas. It's the supernatural power to plant for the exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think for. That's the simple one-two list on how to plant this Christmas. And finally, you need some courage, don't you? There's no better time in all of eternity for you to look up, get inspiration from God, and plant. Yes, it takes courage to plant when the ground of life looks barren. Maybe you thought the trials were a sign to give up, lay down, surrender, and just abort all your dreams. No, you've endured much. You've lost a great deal. Some see your wins and victories, but God knows the loss that you feel. Just because that ground looks barren doesn't mean that you leave it barren today is the day that you get to plant. Plant your best seed into the ground of opportunity, the ground of God's kingdom of love. Yes, it requires courage because you've hurt so much. You've endured much, but don't stop now. The only limit to God's giving 
is your willingness to ask and believe. I have to say it again, plant this Christmas. It may be forgiveness on the ground of bitterness for new beginnings, a new dawn. It may be mercy to free the soil of barrenness and launch a new season of life. It may be joy and happiness to interrupt the grief and the sorrow, but plant good, plant life. Sow attention, give a listening ear, bake a plate of cookies for that neighbor, plant your best gift and cheerfully give. God says, give honor to whom honor is due. It's time to plant. It's time to walk in God's love, hope, and evergreen joy and peace. Plant now for the good future that God has ordained for your life. Let me pray for you. Father God, we desire to plant this Christmas, and we need your help to do it. We need courage and discernment to plant the right thing in the ground of your kingdom. Help us to give our best gift planting that speaks to legacy, honor, and eternal life. Some of us have a hard time letting go of what was a Christmas past. Children move out, loved ones move on, the time changes, and it hurts to remember. But you never change, God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never leave us or forsake us. Help your family today to plant their expectation into the ground of your love for a transcendent Christmas this year. Yes, more is possible with you, God. Open their eyes to see all that you've prepared for them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.